after studying this module you shall be able to know about the terminologies associated with identity thefts and frauds the difference between identity theft and identity frauds the types and methods of identity theft frauds according to a survey report around 1 million individuals are victimized by identity theft frauds every year identity fraud is a mounting industry in the criminal underworld although such fraud is generally carried out for economic gain it may also be used to gain access to secure or confidential reasons in this region minors may attempt to purchase alcohol or gain access to nightclubs or gambling establishments further deceptive uses may involve aliens seeking territorial entrance or terrorist desiring concealment in actual fact personal identification information has become a merchantable article of trade one whose worth is increasing gradually corresponding to other extents of criminal behavior approximations on the occurrence of identity theft fraud fluctuate widely historically researchers have struggled to develop a valid arrangement of crime measurement regrettably there are a range of factors which adversely affect a factual measure of crime these traditional hindrances have included lack of reporting victimization by the public lack of reporting by police to central agencies jurisdictional disciplines in crime measurement and selective enforcement based on community standards and departmental resources these characteristics have also been found to affect reporting of identity theft fraud now understanding identity theft frauds customarily the basic term identity theft has been used to describe any use of stolen personal information however such representation fails to provide a comprehensive picture of the totality of possibilities adjoining that concept known as identity identity fraud which comprehends identity theft within its purview which may be defined as the use of vast selection of illegal activities based on deceitful use of identifying information of a factual or fictitious individual thus it provides for the creation of fictional identities originated from a single breeder document which means fictitious or stolen identifiers identity fraud is committed when a trustworthy identity is created by assessing others credit cards financial or employment records security facilities computer system or such upon development of the credibility identity the criminal possibilities are indefinite petty criminals for example may simply engage in several counts of credit card frauds 
by ordering goods for their personal use. More refined criminals may use such information to create additional lines of credit and separate bank accounts to take full advantage of the possibility of theft. And terrorists may belligerently abuse the information to conceal their own identity, hide from authorities, gain access to sensitive information and further their ideological philosophy. The information necessary to execute such activities may originate from a variety of sources including but not limited names, addresses, date of birth, social security members, taxpayers, identification numbers, alien registration numbers, passport numbers, historical information like city of birth or mother's maiden name and biometric information such as fingerprints, voice prints and retinal images. Individuals involved in the theft and utilization of personal identification information and fictitious identities may target upon private citizens, company employees, corporate executives and government workers. Although identity theft fraud may be committed by individuals, lose social or business networks, terrorist groups and criminal organizations. It may be used for personal gain or corporate interest or to facilitate the globalization of crime by terrorist and organized criminal groups. The criminal acts which may be involved in by such entities include but are not limited to money laundering, drug trafficking, foreign smuggling, weapon smuggling, extortion, fund misappropriations, embezzlements, and other financial crimes. Unfortunately, effective procurement of one introductory document of identification empowers its holders to secure a variety of others. Now, typology of identity theft and fraud. Contrary to the general acceptance, identity theft is not a new phenomenon. In contemporary society, identity theft fraud is characteristically characterized by the intention or motivation of the offender. In the most common sense, identity theft fraud may be bifurcated as either financial or non-financial. Under this wide domain, there are five main types of identity theft frauds befalling. First is assumption of identity. This is the rarest form of identity theft fraud and occurs when an individual purely assumes the identity of his or her victim, including all aspects of the target's lives. It must be noted that this type of activity is uncommon as it is considerably more difficult to achieve. Even if a thief could identically duplicate the physical characteristics and appearance of his intended target, the possibility of learning personal histories, intimate relationships and communication tones is extremely remote. However, it is important to note that this type of identity fraud has occurred even in cases where the probability of such assumptions limited on the absurdity. Second is theft for occupation and territorial entry. 
This kind of identity theft fraud is gradually more common due to the development of illegal immigration and foreign smuggling. It includes the fraudulent use of embezzled or fictitious personal information to obtain employment or to gain entry into the territory. In a study, documents most frequently intercepted by officials included alien registration cards, non-immigration visas, passports and citizenship documents and border crossing passes. These documents are presented by immigrants who attempt to enter the territory in search of employment or other immigration benefits like naturalization or permanent residency status. The study further indicates the large scale counterfeiting of employment eligibility documents like social security cards accredited to the increasing drift of fake documents. Now third is criminal record identity theft fraud. This type is often ignored in discussions of identity thefts maybe because it is not as common or because the immediate financial consequences are not substantial. It has been used traditionally by individuals trying to evade apprehensions or criminal prosecution. Reverse criminal record identity theft occurs when a criminal uses a victim's identity not to engage in criminal activity but to seek gainful employment. Unfortunately, criminal record identity theft fraud is exclusively insidious as it frequently remains undiscovered. Now the fourth is virtual identity theft fraud. It is a comparatively new phenomena. Virtual identity theft fraud involves the use of personal, professional and other extents of identity towards the development of a dishonest virtual personality. Unlike physical identities which are secured to social networks, legal documentation and biological characteristics. Virtual identities are mostly individually constructed. Certainly, virtual identities are often far distanced from actuality. They are often used for online dating, role playing and assessing dividend sites or locations containing questionable content. Deviant activities associated with this type of identity theft fraud track the scale of traditional illicit behavior. Now the fifth is credit identity theft fraud. Undoubtedly it is the most common type of identity theft fraud. Credit identity theft fraud is also the most feared by the public. It may be defined as the use of stolen personal and financial information to facilitate the creation of duplicitous accounts. This explanation specific by design requires the affirmative act of securing additional credit. It does not include traditional activities like the illegal use of a stolen credit card. As the activity is more appropriately suited under status relating to credit card frauds. Credit identity theft on the other hand is inexhaustible and not bound by the amount of cash or credit which is instantly available. Rather it allows criminals to create additional sources of revenue through the establishment of multiple accounts. Now the methods of identity theft in this the first is mail theft. Although it is hard to identify which method of identity theft fraud is most commonly engaged. 
the theft of information from physical mailboxes is certainly one of the most common. Unfortunately, numerous documents containing personal and financial information are deposited in unlocked containers on the side of the road until it is retrieved. Oftentimes, such retrieval is conducted by someone other than the intended recipient and is used to generate illegal profit or to facilitate criminal activities. Physical mailboxes can contain a plethora of valuable information. Several times they even use mail breeder documents. This includes but it is not limited to driver's license, passports and financial statements. Although some thieves randomly target mailboxes, other targets those whose red flag indicates outgoing mail. Now card skimming, ATM manipulation and fraudulent technologies. A more refined method of data theft involves the reading and recording of personal information encoded on the magnetic strip of an automated teller machine ATM or credit card. Once stored, the stolen data is recoded onto the magnetic strip of a secondary or dummy card. This process is known as card skimming results in a dummy card which is a fully service credit or debit card indistinguishable from the original while purchasing. While card skimming was traditionally reversed to facilitate credit card fraud, it is increasingly being employed with the collection of other personal information to create additional accounts card skimmers came into a variety of shapes and size. Most often miniature cameras or copiers and can be mounted on retail and ATMs. In some cases thieves have actually developed fraudulent ATMs. Thus consumers are intensely encouraged to only use those machines that are maintained by financial institutions and to be alert for any suspicious equipment or attachment. Now the third is internet facilitated methods. The majority of identity theft fraud is still committed by means of traditional or non-technological methods. Although the internet is presently available to even the most naive computer users, the structure of the medium is essentially vulnerable. Indeed, Online identity theft is chiefly facilitated by faults in a range of internet standard protocols created before the implications of cybercrime were revealed. In fact, the World Wide Web was designed not for security but efficiency in which protocols make validation extremely difficult. Now crimes facilitated by identity thefts. Although the theft of personal data is exceptionally profitable, its value often lies in the criminal activity facilitated by the information and not in the theft itself. Identity theft is the introductory element on which some criminals and terrorists construct illegal complex assemblies. The position of the product in question empowers such individuals or entities to remain unidentified, enter scheduled region, circumvent detection and enforcement and transfer resources. Crimes facilitated by identity theft fraud include but are not limited to student loan fraud, immigration fraud, social security fraud, insurance fraud, credit card fraud, tax fraud and various telemarketing and internet scams. They can also incidentally include traditional crimes ranging from auto theft to narcotics or weapons trafficking and organized crime. 
In fact, criminals can efficiently exploit fictitious and fraudulent entities to escape detection or avoid prosecution in almost any criminal activity. However, the crimes which are directly facilitated by identity theft fraud are generally limited to those crimes which are associated with fraud, illegal immigration or terrorism. Although many sources fail to distinguish between identity theft and identity fraud, a comprehensive definition of the utilization of fraudulent or stolen identification is necessary if legislation, enforcement and prosecutions are to be effective. The basic term identity theft has been used to describe in use of stolen personal information. Identity theft which comprehends identity theft within its purview may be defined as the use of a vast selection of illegal activities based on decidful use of identifying information of a factual or fictitious individual. The information necessary to accomplish such activities may originate from a variety of sources including name, address, date of birth, taxpayer identification numbers, alien registration numbers, passport numbers, historical information and biometric information. In contemporary society, identity theft fraud is characteristically characterized by the intention or motivation of the offender. In the most common sense, identity theft fraud may be bifurcated as either financial or non-financial. Criminals can efficiently exploit fictitious or fraudulent identities to escape detection or avoid prosecution in almost any criminal activity.